Hi, welcome back to Spring One's Agile Leadership Track. Next on the agenda, we have Kate and Rhea from VMware with a talk with the menacing title, As an Attacker, I Want Your Data, Anticipating Security Threats. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spring One from us as well. Thank you for coming to this talk. I'm Rhea. I'm a member of the Spring security team, and I'm joined here by Kate, who's a product manager for Zendesk platform. And in our talk today, we're going to talk to you about how to incorporate security into your product development process. So I'll hand it over to Kate to introduce herself and get us started. All right. So first off, uh, I'm not seeing the slides. Um, that's OK. Try it now. Here we go. There we go. Perfect. So first off, we're going to talk about personas. Product development teams often use personas to help frame our thinking when it comes to building new features in our software. We focus on realistic people that will find value in our software, and we try to prioritize work that helps them get their jobs done. So here we're looking at Mary. Mary is a marketing director at a large retail company who is going to use our application to define her customer segmentation strategies so that she can create email marketing campaigns. With this defined persona, our team can understand who Mary is, what she needs to do, and why she needs to do it. Some of you may be familiar with our user story format for Mary. It starts out like this. <clears throat> Next slide. We outline the high-level functionality that Mary's looking for. In this case, she wants to access and review customer email addresses and zip code information for customers who've made recent purchases. So we also want our teams to understand why she needs this functionality. Mary wants to use that zip code information to be able to analyze and plan for her region-specific email marketing campaigns. To finish our user story, we outline a set of acceptance criteria. How will we know that the feature that we've outlined to build is complete? How might we test the work from Mary's point of view to deem it ready for release? Let's check out how the Gherkin style format of this acceptance criteria is set up. So first part, given I log in as an admin, this is the beginning state of the scenario, setting some context for the new work. When I visit the admin page, this is a specific action that the user's taking that's gonna trigger our new functionality. Then I see the customer information. This is a defined testable outcome. So in this scenario, Mary should be able to log into our app using an admin account, access the admin page, and see our customer lists with the specific metadata displayed. If we deliver this feature and then run through these steps and for some reason we don't see the functionality we're expecting, we can reject the story and send it back to our engineering team to fix. If we hit the admin page and our customer metadata is there, we can accept the story. Mary's gonna love it. And then we can move on to the next one. So it looks like Rhea worked on this story and delivered it. Let's run through the acceptance criteria together to accept it. So I have the application running locally here. I'm gonna take you to the application and we'll see if we can accept this story. I'm going to log in as Mary, mary at marketing.com, and I'm gonna put in the password. And here we get redirected to the admin homepage. We see all of the customers, their first name, last name, job title, email address, and zip code. So what do you think, Kate? Can we accept it? Looks good to me. All right. So Mary's happy. She's got her customer data she needs to plan her marketing campaign. But what about malicious intent? Uh-oh. So here we have Henri. Henri is an experienced hacker whose life mission is to poke around software that he doesn't own to find security holes that will help him steal private information. Let's go ahead and set up a persona for Henri too. So Henri wants PII, that's personally identifiable information. He's gonna sell that to untrustworthy sources through his hacker group. This guy is bad news. Henri has motivations and goals to accomplish with our software, just like Mary. Well, maybe not just like Mary. If we go back to our user story from before, written for Mary, it clearly states that you need to be logged in as an administrator to visit the admin page and to access that customer information. So Henri shouldn't be able to access customer data then, right? Well, we're going to have to see about that. So let's test it out and see whether he can access that information or not. 
Um, I believe I need to log Mary out first. And then we'll come in and log in as Henri. So far, so good. He has logged in and he gets redirected to the customer homepage. He's not seeing any kind of other customer information other than his own. But let's not forget that hackers are smart and this is their job. So something Henri might think about doing is uh, he might see that this URL is customer home and he might think about changing that to admin home to see if he can access the admin homepage. And it looks like, in fact, he can, because we didn't secure this endpoint and specifically restrict it to admins. Oh my gosh, okay. That was definitely not our intent. <clears throat> How might we plan ahead to thwart attackers like Henri? We're gonna try to write our engineers a user story written from Henri's perspective with a bit of a twist an attacker story, if you will. So Henri wants our customer data. He's gonna sell it to really bad people who will spam our customers with ads for life. He's even got an evil laugh that we can tell this guy means business. We can set up our attacker story with rejection criteria, which we can use to determine whether or not Henri's attempt will be successful. If Henri gets what he wants, we have failed to protect our customers. So we set up rejection criteria for the story based on his success. In this specific example, when Henri attempts to access that admin page with customer data, he better not be able to get to it. If he does, we'll reject the story until changing the URL gives him a 403 error. All right, so now that we have that attacker story, we can see how Spring Security might be helpful in writing a test um, according to that attacker story to prevent this privilege escalation attempt. The attack that we just saw is called privilege escalation. And it happens when a user gets access to some resources that they aren't normally allowed. So we're gonna use Spring Security's test support to write a test that corresponds to the attacker story we just read and make sure that this privilege escalation attempt can't happen. Um, once we have the test and we see that it fails and that our application is not protected from the attack, then we can secure our application and make sure that in the future it is protected. So I'm gonna switch you over from the slide share here and share my code with you. Here we go. So I'm gonna take you straight away to our test file. And this is where we have all the tests for the application that we're running. The first couple of tests here are checking that unauthorized users or unauthenticated users, users that aren't logged in, can't access the customer page or the admin page. And that's what we want. We don't want um, anybody that knows the customer URL to just be able to go there and um, see some customer information, similarly for the admin page. Following that, we have some tests that are simulating a form login using Spring Security's test support, and they're simulating a login with a regular user, with a regular customer. And they're making sure that when this customer logs in, they get redirected to the customer homepage and they're authenticated with a role customer. And next up, we have a similar test where, again, we're using the form login support, and we're logging in as an admin, in this case, mary at marketing.com, making sure she gets redirected to the admin page and she's logged in with the role admin. And then finally, the last two tests are making sure that if Mary knows the admin URL and she's logged in, then she's able to access the page. And if a customer knows the customer URL, um, then they're able to access the customer homepage. And you might have noticed we're missing a test. We're missing the test that corresponds to the attacker story that we just wrote. What happens when a customer tries to access the admin homepage? There's no test for that. So let's go ahead and write that test. First, we'll start off by saying that this is a test. And then we're going to use this annotation uh, with user details. And here we can specify the user ID of an existing user. In this case, since we are simulating a hacker, we can use henriattacker.com. And then we can start writing our test. And this test will test that on an admin homepage, when someone who is just a customer tries to access the page, then they are forbidden. And then writing our test, we're gonna start off by mocking a request to get the admin page. And 
And then we're going to say, we expect that since this person is not an admin, that the status they get back is forbidden. So let's run this test and we'll see what happens. I think we all know what's going to happen though. Based on what we just saw when we were trying out the application, we know that Henri does in fact have access to the homepage, the admin homepage. So very soon we'll see that this test is actually a failure. And if we come down here, we can see that it failed because it expected a 403 forbidden code, but it actually got a 200 okay. Um, so we saw that this test failed and that's important when you're writing your tests in general. You need to know that your test will fail when your application isn't secured correctly. So in this case, we know that the admin homepage isn't secured. So we wanna make sure that the test is failing. It is possible that we could misconfigure our test and it would always pass. And then if we had a regression and somehow um, had a hole in our security, then this test wouldn't be able to catch it. So it's good that it failed now, uh, let's fix it. To do that, I'm gonna open up our security config. And what we're saying right now is that any request needs to be authenticated. So um, all of the URLs are protected um, by making sure that the users need to be logged in. And that's good, but it's not quite enough for what we need. We also need to say that if you're an admin, so if, or if you're accessing an admin page, so if you're accessing any page that starts with admin, then you must have the role of admin. So someone that doesn't have the role of admin shouldn't be able to access the admin homepage. And that's all we need to do here. Let's come and run our test again. And we'll see that this time it'll pass. At least that's what we're hoping. And it does, since now our application, our admin endpoints are secured. Um, I just wanna show you one other quick thing, which is, uh, has to do with this with user details annotation. So right now we're using this annotation and we're supplying it an existing username. Uh, it could be that you don't want to use your existing users to write your tests with, or you don't have a user that suits your criteria for this test exactly. So you could use a different annotation. You could use the with mock user annotation. And here, rather than supplying an existing user, we can create a user that suits whatever our needs are. So in this case, I will create a user and this user could be, have the username bad hacker, something that doesn't exist already. And uh, this user needs to have some roles and we'll give it the role customer since we don't want them to be an admin. And then we can run the test again and we'll get a similar result or rather the same result. All right, looks good. Let me switch you back to the slides now. So Henri has been thwarted using these security methods. Our customers are now protected and Mary is still able to do what she needs. So as a brief summary of what we just did, we created tests simulating Henri, a customer, directly accessing the admin homepage. We saw that the test failed because Henri was in fact able to access the admin homepage when he shouldn't have been. So then we went to our security configuration and restricted the admin homepage to just administrators. After that, we reran the test and the test was now passing because Henri is forbidden from accessing the admin homepage. I wanted to talk a little bit about how to bake attackers into your agile process. So try to create an attacker persona with your team. Consider all the different types of malicious intent that someone could inflict upon your product and its users. Could they steal data or money? Could they disrupt your business processes? What about causing physical harm? Schedule an attacker focus. If your team needs to play catch up with security features, it might be worth spending an iteration or two prioritizing security as a key deliverable theme. Add attacker rejection criteria to all of your story templates so it doesn't get missed. Many project management tools like Jira or Pivotal Tracker offer templates for user stories, so you don't have to spend too much time writing the same as a I want format. 
What if you added attacker rejection criteria underneath your standard acceptance criteria in your template to ensure you're thinking about security for each feature each time? Include security outcomes in each feature plan and make them part of your roadmap estimations. Plain and simple, security should not be an afterthought. Just as we consider testing a key part of our feature release planning, we should also include security measures as a regular component of each item on our roadmap. It might impact estimations and push release dates, but an insecure release is worse than no release at all. And then I have a couple of tips for, if you're an engineer, um, how you can bake attackers into your development process. And the first one is to validate the security rules of your application, not just the business logic. So once you've added security to your application, there's some implied functionality that you expect. And I don't think you should assume that it'll just work or wait for an external audit to tell you that you have security flaws. You need to make sure that you're validating the security rules that you've added and make sure that they behave as you expected. The next piece of advice is to test your API with different users. Some users that should have access and some users that should not. Spring Security, as we just saw, lets you do this with an existing user or a mock user if you don't have a user that suits your needs or if you would just rather test with a mock user. And then finally, I just want to say that Spring Security includes test support beyond what we just saw today. Today we saw a small example, but there's also support for CSERF, OAuth2, JWTs, and more. Regardless of how your application is secured, you can still find a way to test it. And here are some resources if you want to try this process with your team. Specifically, the OWASP Foundation has some great resources for getting started. Uh, the first step I would do is check out the OWASP Top 10, which is a list of the top 10 most critical security risks for web applications, and see if your application is vulnerable to any of the attacks mentioned there. Um, and then if you're worried that your application is vulnerable, you can take a look at the testing guide that they provide. And in that guide, they'll help you get started with how you can test for those attacks and make sure your application isn't uh, vulnerable to them. Now, ideally, um, as you just saw, we would write some automated tests for them. But even if you don't have a very good test suite or if you're not very mature at testing yet, you can still use this guide to do some manual testing, which is better than no testing at all. And then um, here we just have some links. You can find the code that we used for this project, um, for this presentation, in that uh, GitHub link. And then there's also the code for the more information about Spring Security there. So we'll leave you with this. Uh, attackers are out there. Stay vigilant. Be proactive and thwart them before it's too late. Talk to your product and security teams today about prioritizing attacker stories. If you want to learn more about Spring Security, I have another talk today in about an hour and a half covering uh, Spring Security patterns. And if you have questions about this talk, we'll be doing a Q&A in a different Zoom meeting. And you can find the Q&A link in our Slack shortly. So thank you for coming here today and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Kate and Ria. I, I enjoyed that so much. I forgot to think about what to say afterwards. Uh, it was uh, informative and immediately ap applicable. It's uh, security can be daunting to developers, and making it approachable is just really important. So I, I loved it. Um, but I want, like like they just said, I want to remind you: take advantage of the opportunity to continue this discussion and head over to the Slack channel for the Q and A with Kate and Ria. <laughs>